Hello, everybody. So this has been asked for time and time again, even on speed paints that don't have anything to do with keychains. And so we're going to finally get around to doing it. It's the axolotl tutorial. A couple things to start off with. One, I know it's not supposed to be pronounced axolotl. I just can't actually pronounce it. I have tried and tried and tried again. And it sounds like mushy peas when I try to say the proper pronunciation. That's on me. I I I I take the L on that one. I can't pronounce it. Um, so do know it is not the proper pronunciation. Um, two, I did not originally come up with this pattern. However, I cannot locate the original photo that I was sent when I first started making the bead axolotls. Um, originally, the reason I started making these in the first place is a friend of mine had wanted to make one and was struggling with it and asked me for help because she knew that I also made them and sent me a photo of an at an angle axolotl and asked if I could figure out how to do the head fin part. Um, and after a little fiddling and stuff, I was able to figure it out and tell her how much cord she needed and all that good stuff. Um, cause I did all the calculations and stuff when I was making it. Um, and that was what the first video I had done, which was the blue axolotl that I have. And <laughs> funny enough, when I went on Google to try to find the original image that I was sent to try to figure out how to make these, I, my video, uh, I think my blue and my yellow videos are both in the first row of results. And I was like, huh, okay, why are you there? So, uh. Yeah, that was the thing. I can't find the original image, unfortunately, though. But do know, I didn't originally make this pattern just out of thin air. I was sent a photo of one of these keychain-type beaded axolotl, candy axolotls, and I was asked on how to make it and, how, like, how much string was needed for it and all of that calculation and stuff because I had the ability to figure that out from a photo. Um, and so that's where this pattern originally came from. I wish I could find the original source, but unfortunately, despite I have looked for months to try to find the original source, I cannot locate the original photo and source of where this pattern comes from. Um, but do know, despite the fact I make them all the time, I did not originally make this pattern, but I did figure out like how many beads are needed for it. And I did make some modifications to the pattern myself. Um, if I remember correctly, the photo that I had originally used had much longer legs. I shortened them slightly and I don't do a middle area thing. I do on some of my axolotls, but not all of them. Typically I do a solid, um, the solid fin in the center. So that being said, can't pronounce it properly. I know that it's not originally my pattern. And I have stated that before in the past that I had worked off a photo to find out how to make these. Um, but because I have been found asked time and time again on how to do the head fin specifically, even though I have a video that does show a slowed down, more close up view of the head fins, I still get asked this question. So I'm making a full voiceover tutorial so that when people ask me in the future, I can just link them this video and be like, here you go. It's already done. Um, cause I did want to make this video in the past before it started becoming a problem of how often I was being asked about this. However, multiple attempts at making this video have not turned out well. Um, case in point, I actually filmed this last night too. Uh, I made this one last night when I was filming it, but I hate the video. Uh, I rambled a little too, too much in it and it was kind of unclear on certain parts of how to film it. Um, so I am redoing it here. So that being said, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this. What you're gonna need for this is beads, obviously, some form of keychain or key ring that you wanna use for this, your cord, scissors, a tape measure. Um, and you'll notice I have lighters. Um, I have two different types of lighters just to show you just need a lighter of some sort because it's a special type of cord I am using. I am actually using a macrame cord. Um, so here's one in its label. Here's black cord. It's called Bonnie Craft Cord and this is the two millimeter cord. And it comes in different colors. So like here's a blue one. I'm using white for this video. I have black. I have also used a green sage color before and I know it comes in also like red and stuff like that. And the reason I am using that instead is I just prefer how it looks for bead critters. So for an example, this is a bead lizard I made a while ago and it's just on a cotton yarn. If I remember correctly, this is, I love, it's, um, P. 
peaches and cream or sugar and cream or lily and cream, they have changed their names so many times, I don't even know anymore. Something and cream, cotton yarn, you can get it from Walmart. Um, and most of my earlier bee lizards and stuff were made out of it, and it's fine. Like, this is a, this lizard is several years old at this point, but he's still holding up. Um, and I know someone who has one of the lizards I made them in this style with the same yarn. And they've had that lizard on their active bag for like six, no, for like four years now they've had this lizard on their bag and it's still holding firm. Um, and that's just a cotton yarn with some overhead knots on it. Um, but I swapped to using this macrame cord because you'll notice that when I pull on it, it doesn't separate the beads as much. It's not as stretchy versus like, so like if you look at the two compared to each other, there's much more give on the yarn one versus the cord. And the other thing is you'll notice there's a tail on the cord one, but I don't have a tail on this one. And the reason is you can melt the ends of this macrame cord in order to finish it off or you can fuse ends of it together in order to make a longer cord and that's what I actually do with my scrap cord so it kind of helps with the fact that like if I measure my cord incorrectly I can just melt the cord together and use it to make something else I often will use melted cord to make um bead lizards instead because it's a shorter cord so I take the ends of a lot of my cords melt them together and then I just make an a lizard out of it and it just cuts down on the waist of it um however it's not for everyone and this cord does make it kind of hard to do like multiple passes through certain things so like when I'm making like a mermaid or something like that doing the tail fans at the end or trying to do multiple passes more than just the back and forth can get really difficult because it's thick um and you can see that in some videos I've posted where I'm doing that and you'll see me put a needle on the end of it to try to force it through and I'm struggling with it it is a pain in the butt but it works for the things I mostly make which are these axolotls and bead lizards and I actually, right before I was filming this, um, I tried to film this earlier and I had to stop and then I set up to film again and I grabbed all my bead critters and stuff and I hadn't looked at how many axolotls I've made and it is a lot. I will show you at the end of the video. I've made a lot of these critters over the years. Um, so you just need a cord of some sort. I don't suggest using embroidery cord though if you are going to use that. Like I would say use a yarn or use a proper beading cord for this um, or go get the macrame cord. I'm, I can't control you. I like using the macrame cord. Um, I don't suggest using like a thinner thing like an embroidery floss or something because I use... <laughs> Here's the thing. I have those ones still which is like the, the yarn the yarn lizard and the macrame cord lizards, I have those still around, but ones that I've made when I was younger that I used embroidery floss for to do as the cord, they snapped and I, they, they're gone. Most of the things I made when I was younger using thinner cord that I got, like, it snapped, it is no longer here. Whereas ones I've made with yarn and stuff have held up over like the course of like five plus years. So if you want your keychains to last, just make sure the cord that you're using is good and your knots are secure. Um, and I keep and it's like, it is, it's like I said, I've had one on my, I have one on most of my own backpacks and my old coworker that I had given one to has had that on his backpack for a long time. And I know other people who I gave them to that still have them on theirs. So I do know that they'll hold up with yarn or macrame cord. So take your pick, take your poison. If you're using just the normal cord, that's fine too. And if you're using like a waxed cord, that's a little thicker or like a little more stable, that works as well. Um, so the lighters I have here, and you see them in all my beading videos, is just because I use it to melt the ends of my macrame cord. That is what the point of it is. Um, I don't recommend that for kids. Um, if you want to make these critters and stuff with children and use the macrame cord, make sure that the adult is the one melting it. And even as an adult, uh, be careful. I have singed my hands and fingers on the ends of these many, many times, but my fingertips, um... There's, I can withstand a little bit of brutality on them because I also do sewing and I have stabbed my fingers so many times with pins while I'm sewing that I can just deal with it for the most part. Um, the other things you're going to need is a key ring or something like that. So here I have a split ring but I also have this little lobster claw piece. Um, I'm going to use the split ring for this. I do use these pretty often too. Um, so it's just it's kind of a preference thing. I don't recommend using a standard like... Um, lanyard hook like one of these 
I don't say use one of these for the axolotls specifically because they're a little flimsy and I don't think they hold up as well, so a split ring or one of these works really well. I have both of these on my axolotls. Um, I alternate between them depending. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use a split ring instead of this today. Um, and if you're using a cord that doesn't melt like mine, you're going to want to measure out 120 inches of cord. So you want 120 inches total. Um, because I have the melting cord, I'm actually going to measure slightly less. And that's because I don't have to tie a knot at the end. It's better to have too much cord to have to cut off at the end than not have enough cord and not be able to add any more on. So I'm going to go ahead and measure out about 112 inches for myself personally, and that's just because I know that amount will be perfectly fine for how I'm making this axolotl today. Um, and the way I tend to measure it, because you're gonna fold it in half anyway, you can just measure out 60 inches, fold it in half, and then make sure that you have 120 that way. So go down here, and because I said I'm doing 112, I measured to 56 pinch that right there so at the 56 march fold this in half and then make sure my cord is doubled that length and you'll see right there so my cord is now doubled and I'm still holding it down there so I'm gonna go ahead and snip it and because this this actually can show you to um, why I melt the ends so You'll notice that one end is melted, it's nice, small, and it almost makes itself a little needle point of a sort to be able to go through. Um, let's see if I can. And you'll see the other end is fluffy, and that'll become problematic as you're going through it. This is a hard end too, like it becomes a melted plastic, it's hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and melt this end as well to match the other end so that it will be easier to use. So I just melt the end and then I'll pinch it to form it into a small little point. Um, and you can use whatever, like, it's just, I just have, I have the two different lighters just to show the different lighters that you can, it doesn't matter what kind of lighter you use. Um, funny enough, I have a shit ton of lighters and they're none of them because I smoke. It is literally all for hobby crafts as well as candles. <laughs> um, so we're going to take our split ring now and I'm going to thread it onto one end of the cord. Hold the two ends together so that we can make sure that this goes all the way directly to the middle of the cord. Um, and now we're going to do an overhead knot. So holding this tight to make sure the ends stay even, I'm going to wrap this around two fingers and then cross it over. So you'll see now that we have this loop, it's crossed over. This is the split ring is over the top and we're going to bring that around and through. So we have this through. Grab the end, pinch it, and then pull this tight, but leave a little room so it can wiggle around. Because um, it's a split ring, you want to be able to open it and close it to put it on your backpack or whatever. And just tighten everything up. And now your cord is all prepped to go. And you'll notice this is a really long cord. It is a bit obtuse to use. It is a long cord. It's a pain in the butt. Also, on beads, I realize I didn't specify the kind I'm using. These, this is an unopened bag, but this is the same pack. I just used an open pack. These are just from Michaels. It's just a color pack, and you can make this out of one pack. You only need one, and I think it costs like five bucks for a pack. But you can use whatever pony beads you have. Just make sure that if you're using different types of pony beads, they have the same size barrel. And by that, I mean because these are technically, I think they're called bar barrel pony beads or something like that. And they're a nine millimeter barrel, I believe. Um, you want to make sure your beads are all the same size because otherwise it'll lead to weird bubbling and stuff in your project. I have made bead lizards and bead axolotls in the past using different types of beads that weren't the same size and it doesn't go well. Uh, it'll work out in the end, but it kind of looks a little wonky and depending on which kind they are, the cord won't fit through them. So something to keep in mind. I typically use um, the beadery or just whatever pony beads I can buy. I typically will just buy a pack of them at Walmart and I use that. Like, I'm very cheap when it comes to making bead crafts. I just, if I see pretty beads, I will buy pretty beads. Um, I once made a, a I'm, sadly this one broke because it was made out of thread. But I did make one out of, like, glass beads once. And I want to remake it at some point with a better cord. Um, 
So we're gonna start, and the way that I tend to bead my axolotls up is I start from the tail and I go up to the head. And this is some, I'm not gonna do it in this video, I will go row by row. But typically the way I will bead things up is I will put multiple rows in order onto one strand and then just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I find it just speeds the process up, but if you're not familiar with the pattern and know where all your breaks are in the pattern, it can lead to some difficulties with it. I So like case in point is normally when I make an axolotl, I will thread all the way up to this row onto the string at once, tie a slip knot, and then go back and forth, back and forth until I'm done, and then do the legs. And I just find that easier because it means I don't have a bunch of beads on my table that I can just knock over, or if my cat comes in because he's a menace, he won't hit the desk and knock them over, or the threads will catch on it and kind of that kind of thing. So it's all up to personal preference how you want to go about beading them up. I will go strand by strand on this one just so you can kind of get an idea. Um, the cords are a little bit of a pain in the butt to, like, the first couple rows, too, are also kind of a pain in the butt because the strings are so long at this point. So we're going to take the first cord, and we're going to take the first row, which is one bead, grab the other end, thread that on, grab our other end so we have both ends, and we're going to pull it tight, right and snug, up to the key ring. The way I used to do this was a little different. Um, so there we go, nice and tight. The way I used to actually start these, my earlier ones were started this way, is I would actually start, and I'm just grabbing the end again. I always tend to grab the left end and then I thread with the right end. Um, that's just a personal preference because I'm right-handed, so it's a little easier for me to do it that way. Um, when I first started making these, I actually used to thread them differently. I, I still start with the tail. However, I used to put the key ring on the head. Um, actually, I have, my, I have my axolotls right here, so I can show what I mean. Come here. I have like a huge key ring of these things. Um, Case in point, here's one. So you'll see I still start at the end here, but instead of the key ring being in the center, I actually use the first end of the tail would start it off, and then I would bead down, and then I would do an overhead knot, and I would put the, the key ring on the top and then melt the cord. However, this looks a little clunky, so I don't necessarily like to bead them the same way anymore. And instead, what I tend to do is I'll start with the key ring on the end of the tail, go down, and then I will just melt the ends together on the head, and that makes a much cleaner... Like, if you compare the two, it just looks a lot neater on the head. Like, I think it looks a lot cleaner, so I just prefer that. And that way, instead of them hanging like this off your bag, they just hang like this. And that's just... It's a personal preference, so... But anyway, on to the next one, so, on to the next row. So we take these next two. Ah, so drop beads. Get back here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There it is. So take the next row. So it's the two orange. Thread them on the left string. Grab the right string. Put that on. And then we're going to just tighten it up. This cord also tends to curl around sometimes, so I will adjust it as it curls. So we have two, and I'm going to grab the left thread again, because like I said, I just find it easier to do it this way because I'm right-handed. And then we will take our next row, which is these three. So I have the three on, grab our right cord, and then we're going to just thread it on through and tighten it right on up. And this gets a little easier as you go because the cords get shorter as you go. Like, quite honestly, the axolotl is very is built very similar to, like, an alligator. Um, if I felt like going through my bag of bead critters, I would show an alligator as an example, but I don't feel like digging one out right now. 
Um, so the next row, it's the same row. Um, but it's basically you thread up the tail to the point you do the legs. The legs are the exact same as you would do on a lizard or a fox kind of thing. Like it's the same basic bead leg and I will show in detail how to do that when I get to them. But it's basically just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, like a standard bead critter just going row by row. So there's the next row, grabbing the right cord now to put it through. I do apologize for all the traffic that's in the background as well. I live on a main road, unfortunately, and it is an unfortunate sea of trying to film while there's still sunlight out so that it looks better, because that was my problem with the video I filmed last night, is I actually filmed it at like 1 a.m., so it was quiet, however, the lighting was not the best, so I wanted to refilm it because I wasn't happy with the lighting. The downside is, if I want good lighting though, there is going to be traffic noises. I have never been able to figure out how to remove traffic noises from my audio. Um, more so because I'm using my camera's audio right now instead of a microphone because I am not that technologically um, skilled. I'll figure it out someday. But that's the main reason I don't normally add voiceover to things. Because um, narration and stuff, I can film that more or less at night. Because you don't have to film a video piece to go with it. But most of the time when I'm filming crafting stuff, it's during the day because the light's better. But unfortunately, you get all the tractor trailers driving right on by. Like, I literally can look out my window and see it. And yet, Domino's still can't find my house on the GPS. <laughs> and then next. And you'll see that it's get, it gets a little easier to go to. Oop! I accidentally hit one of the fins. Where's one of your beads? Oh no. Oh, there it is. I didn't even notice that one get hit and fall. Those, for the record, are the head fins. I don't line the head fins up when I'm doing the layout for the body just because it gets clunky and then I keep hitting them and then they all get discombobulated and I have to redo them anyway. Um, so I always set my head fins off to the side like that um, just to make life easier. Another row... It's literally just back and forth. And you can use whatever colors you really want for the different parts. I have chosen to use slightly different colors that were all in the same pack for this one, just so you can easily see where the separations all are. And you'll see we're now into a three row because we were doing a bunch of four rows. So now the tail is going to go in a little bit and then it will swap from having the fin color on the outside to the fin color on the inside. Um, and we're almost to the leggies. So there's that row. And then we have this row. There's that, and then we swap from having the pink on the inside. The pink is now going to be on the outside. And you'll see, like I said, it, the cord is now much more manageable now that we've gotten most of the tail done. So now we're going to do, this is the last row before the legs. And a fun thing, I realized this when I was filming this tutorial thing, I hadn't quite registered this. The leg on 
both sets of legs fall right when you have two body colors and then one fin color. Both of them fall right above that last row, so makes it easy to remember. It's kind of how I remember how many beads go in the tail, because I remember five and then I remember three. So there's three rows of three here and then there's five rows of two there. Doesn't make sense when I say it out loud, but it makes sense in my head and it's always how I can remember what goes where when I don't feel like looking at a reference um, axolotl of mine. Because that's how I'll make these sometimes. You'll see me have an axolotl off to the side or the like, and I'll just like look at that to lay out my beads. I look at the past ones that I've made, and I have made a lot of them. So when I say you can use whatever colors you want, I really mean it because I was looking at mine and I have so many. All right, now we're gonna get into the leg. So I'm gonna zoom in. Zoom in and enhance. So the leg, you only want to take one cord. So right now I have the left cord in my hand and I'm going to take three, which this is the leg. So my legs right now on the bottom row, the legs are blue. So we have these three beads and I'm going to thread the leg on first. So there's my leg threaded on. And then I'm going to take the foot beads. So in this case, I have used only purple to make the little foot. So we take those three foot beads and we thread them on after the leg bead. So you can see I have the foot, I, I have the leg, leg in blue, foot in purple. Focus please. And I'm going to take this cord and I'm going to bring it around and go through only the leg. So you'll notice that the foot is now just loose on this loop that is now attached here. So see? You passed only through the leg bead, and then you want to just tighten this all up to the body. And you can adjust your little toesies a little bit. So, just like that. And that's one leg. And I'll show you again on the other leg. So, I'm taking the right cord now. And again, we want to thread the leg color on first. In this case, it's this blue. So we have three. And then we're going to take the foot, which is also three and thread it, ah! or you could be me and drop your beads everywhere, which I keep doing. Um, so, gonna thread the leg back on. So, there's the leg, and then I'm going to take the foot, thread the foot on. So now you have leg in blue, foot, foot is, is closest to the end, leg is close to the body and you're going to separate the foot from the leg and then you take the cord and you're only gonna go through the leg just like that and then you want to just tighten it tighten it all the way up to the body and just you can adjust your little toes to make sure everything lines up, make sure everything's nice and tight. And now you have two little legs. And you'll see they are the exact same legs that you would have on a bead lizard. So, see? That's how you make your basic leg. And this will come back, so this will come back with how we do the, the frills as well. Um, but it's your basic foot. The only difference between my lizard pattern and the axolotl is there's three here versus the two I do on a lizard. So now that those first row of legs are on, we're back to just going back and forth, back and forth. And we'll do back and forth all the way to where that last orange row is. So our next row will be this one, which is two pinks, two orange, two pinks. So thread those on. Again, on my left cord because I'm right-handed, so it's just easier. Do whatever's easiest for you when it comes to threading like this. So I have one row on, take my other cord, cross right on through, grab both ends of my cord, and then just tighten it right on up. And doing that also now locks those legs into position, so you have the butt of your axolotl done. So the next row is two pinks, three orange, and then two pinks. So two pink, three orange, and if you feel like it, you can actually change this middle orange into a different color as well. I've done that in the past. I just didn't do it on this one. 
So you have that row on, you grab your other end, thread that right on, There you go. And then we're going to take cord again, the next row. One way I tend to cut down on how long these axolotl takes is I will actually make a bunch of cord pre-cut and then I will just put the key rings all on it and I will set it into my bead box and then I will have that. So if I want to make an axolotl, cords are pre-cut and I just start going. A lot of the time too, I don't even lay them out like this all nice and pretty. I do that only for videos. When I'm actually just sitting on the couch and beading these, I just take it directly out of my bead bins and just go. Um... But laying it out can help you if you're not sure about your color choices. And to also make sure you have enough beads. Um, typically I only do these when I know I have enough beads. Or I'll change the colors of things to make sure I have enough beads. Um, and one more row. This is a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And then we take our cord end, and you'll see this cord like gets chewed up very fast as you go through. Like it's a chunky boy. And then one more row before we do our last row of legs. And so it's two, one, and then two. So we have our row. Grab our cord. Thread it through. Tighten it right on up. All right, you got your boy's body. And then we're gonna take the leg. And you'll notice I flipped the colors on the legs for the upper legs. I just wanted it for visual difference. So you take your leg and you thread the leg on first. In this case, it's purple. And then you three foot color and I am staying zoomed out for this one just so you can see it still um but you see and it's the same process where you just thread through only the leg leaving that just on the single loop and just tighten it up and adjust your little feeties and then we'll do it one more time so we take our leg color in this case it's the purple put those three purple on so you have your leg and then you take your foot. So you have the three on, three on, and then you only go through the leg. So now you have both sets of legs, the body and the tail. And now we're gonna get onto the head and these. <laughs> which are the thing that everyone asks about is the head fins. And they are confusing at first. Um, but once you figure out how to do them, they get really easy. So we're going to make the neck first. So we have four we have four pinks. So I'm going to put those four pinks on. Pull it tight. And you'll notice it just makes his legs pop up a little bit. Um, and then we have three pinks. This is making his neck. Take our cord, go right on through. So we have those three, tighten it up, and then four, and then right after this row, we will get into those head fins. The head fins that always confuse folk. All right. 
Now to get into the thing that I'm sure, if you're watching this video, is probably what you really want to know. So let's zoom in. I'll even zoom in a tiny bit more. So for our first head fin, you take one side. And in this case, for my head fin, I have chosen to use blue and orange as my two, my two colors that I'm going to do. The way that the head fins are set up is essentially stem, fin, stem, fin, stem. But the way you lace this up, so, see this one is standing alone, you're not going to lace that up at the same time as the rest. Essentially, this is almost like a weird foot with a bend in it. So you want to go stem and then thin, stem, thin, stem, and thin. Well, or gill. It depends on what you want to call it. But the point is, have them linked up like this and you'll notice. So you want your stem to be closest to the body, much like how leg was closest to the body when we did the legs. So you have stem, fin, stem, fin, stem, fin. You want to separate it so you have three and three, just like we did with the leg. However, unlike the leg where you would go through all three at once, we're only going through one. So you have two that aren't getting threaded through right now, and then you have three that aren't getting threaded through. So you're going to take the cord, go through this one bead, just like you, so it's just like a foot like that. And then you're going to take that bead you put aside, that one thin bead you put aside, and you're going to thread it on now. So it's set up like this right now. You have two unthreaded, and then you have three on the loop, and one has gone through twice, and then you've put another one on. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our thread. We're not gonna do anything with this orange bead here. So you can see we have this thin bead here. We're not doing anything with that. And we're going to take the stem bead and we're going to go right back through it like we would do with the other one. So you have it all like that. And then you want to tighten it right up to the body. Much like you would the foot. And you just want to kind of adjust it until you're happy with it. Um, fiddle around. The fins are going to be fiddly no matter what you do, um, so just do it until you're kind of happy with it. Um, it'll get crowded up here because you're going to have three on one side, three on the other. And I will go over the, I will go over it again for each fin so you can see how each one is done. So that side's done, so we're going to grab our other cord. And again, it's a blue and orange one. So put that cord aside. We're not using that one. We're only using one cord. And how we're going to do it is essentially we're making an almost little checkerboard. That's the worst word. It's striping? Checkerboard? I don't know why my brain always wants to call this a checkerboard. It's not. But the point is you leave one fin bead off and you're going to thread it up with stem, fin, stem, fin, stem, and fin. So you have it threaded up. So like if you put it next to the body like this, you have the stem bead closest to the body, fin, stem, fin, stem, fin, alternating. And what we want to do is we take our cord and we're only going to go, th we're not, so we have the three and the three. We're only going to go through this one middle bead on the bottom three. So, see that one stem bead? We're only doubling the cord through there. So those three on our loop, like you would a foot, and then you add this bead on, and then you go through the base bead right here. And then just tighten it up, fiddle with it until you're happy with how the placement looks of the beads against each other. Um, and they will get adjusted too when you go and put the next row on anyway. So now you have both of your first set of gills on. So there's your first row of head fins, just like that. Zoom back out. So what we're going to do next, take your cord, take five. The next row is five. 
of your main color, thread those up. And then we're going to take our other cord and we're going to just pass it through like we did all the rest of the body right now. And tighten it right on up. And you'll notice that kind of pulls the head fins taut and you can kind of fiddle with them if you want to. Um, there you go. So there's your first row of head fins and part of your head. And now we'll do the next row of head fins. Um, so for me, I've changed the color of the stem on here and that's just so I can kind of match the legs um and that's just something I chose to do for color wise but it still helps see the difference of the colors so I'll do this this row zoomed out because I did that row zoomed in so I'll do this row zoomed out so you can see again how you're supposed to line these up so again you want to alternate your colors and leave one of the fin colors off so you're leaving that one fin color off and you want to start with your stem, fin, stem, fin, stem, fin. And you want to end with that fin. So now you have the three and three. So you have that. You're going to take your cord around and you're only going through this one stem. You want to go through basically it's the middle of the stem. So you only go through that one stem bead. And then you're going to grab the fin bead that you've left off like this. Thread that onto your working cord. And then you're going to take that and only go through the stem. You don't want to go through the fin, just the stem. So you just want to go through it like this. So you'll see the cord passes through twice only on these two beads. The rest of it only has a single bead going, it has a single cord going through it. And then just tighten it up. I put my hand on it like that because it just holds that firm while I tighten the cord. Um, and you want to just kind of fiddle. You can see kind of like as I'm putting these fins on, you'll see why I don't like to put them on the main thing while I'm like beading it up because they all kind of bump against each other and they will do that. That's just how this pattern works. So there's that fin done. So I'm gonna go and do the other side now. And again, you can take it and you just alternate the colors like this. So it goes stem, fin, stem, fin, stem, fin. And I'm leaving that one off for the time being. And you put the stem on, you put the fin, you put the stem, fin, stem, and you wanna end with the fin. So again, you have the three beads here, three beads here. These three, you're just going to leave them there and you're going to bring your cord around and only go through this, this purple bead right here, this middle stem. And then you take that bead you left, that fin bead you left off, you thread it on and you go through that final stem bead. Just like that. And then you want to tighten it all up. Another way to tighten it is grab the very top stem bead and just pull it because that's at the top of the loop. So and then adjust your beads until you're happy. And then what we'll do is what we did last time as well, where we take five of the main color and we're going to thread it on. Then we're going to take the other end. Just like that, pull it tight, and it locks those fins into place. And now we'll go on to the last row of fins. And again, I have the blue. I have brought the blue back for my repeating pattern that I am currently using for my color scheme. You can also do these in a solid color too. That It's totally possible to do these in a solid, and I think I have some I've done solid. Um, do I have any with solids? Yes, I have solid ones. <laughs> Me looking at the horde of axolotls I have made to see if I have any with solid colored fins. I do. And it's the same thing. So if you were doing a solid colored one, you just want to thread six up. And then you want to only go through the fourth bead, add your seventh bead on, and then go through that final bead near the head. So... Actually, should I show you guys just what it would look like if you were doing this with solid colors? Like I said, I did it with mixed match colors because that makes it easier to kind of view what you're doing. Um, so, 
so actually I'll just I'll show you this just so you can kind of see it so I think that's seven. Yeah, that's seven. Yeah, for the record, this is the bead pack that these beads actually came from. You can see I've used a good portion of it. Um, so if you have, if you're going to do a solid colored fin, it's the same process. So you want to have your six and then you have your seventh bead off to the side. So if you were going to do a solid colored head fin, so you would thread on six. So one, two, three four, five, and six. So you have your six colors on, whoops. You have your six right on there. So you're gonna separate, so you have three on top and then three on the bottom and you're gonna take your cord and this fourth bead, you're going to just go through that fourth bead. And then you're going to take that seventh bead that you left off the side, thread the seventh bead on, and then go through the final bead which is closest to the head. And then you would pull it tight like you do with your other fin. Like you would do with this, like the like I've been doing. You just pull it tight. I'm not gonna pull this one tight because I'm gonna replace it with the actual colors I'm using. Um, but if you were doing that, that's all it is: is you put the fourth bead down is the one you would go through instead of like stem bead. It's still a stem bead. It's just all the same color. So essentially, thread six, keep the seventh off, and then you'll add the seventh on when you're going back through. And that's what creates that weird little fin shape. So on that note, we're gonna do it again. So we're going to go stem, and then we'll do fin, stem, fin, stem, and fin again. So you have your six on there, separate the three off, and then you're going to go back through this fourth bead right here, so you, your middle stem, and then you'll add your last fin bead on and go through the bottom stem. And this is where it's good to have extra cord if you're not familiar with doing this because it lets you have a little more wiggle room. Um, I am using a slightly shorter cord than what I would recommend. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I would recommend using 120 if you're not familiar with this or you're using a cord that doesn't melt like mine will. So there's one fin and then we'll do it. And you'll see how these all push against each other. And again, that's why I don't like to have them all lined up when I'm doing all of my um, initial layouts because they kind of compete for space. So to the final fin, again, for the last time on this axolotl, you basically are going to go with stem and then a fin bead, a stem bead, so you have your three, and then fin, stem, and yeah, come on, get on. Fin, have them separated like that. Your last fin bead is left to the side. Bring this cord back around through that middle bead, just like that. Add your final bead on, and then go through that bottom bead. just like that. And then tighten everything up and adjust your fin as you see fit. So you'll see it buckle, buckles and stuff a little bit. I just find if you pull on the top three beads and kind of pull the cord taut, you can kind of fiddle with it until it gets into the shape that you kind of want it to be in. Um, like so. So we have our last row of fins on. So what we're going to do next Make sure your cords are all tight. We're going to do the eye row. So eye color. So one, and then you want to do three of your base bead. So for me, it's the pink. And then you do your last eye. So you have five, and then we're going to take our cord. Just go through all five again. Just like that. And then pull it tight. Just like that and you can kind of press your headphones down so they'll kind of behave now and then we'll do a row of four of the body so for me that's pink just like that 
and then we'll go through all four of those beads pull it tight and then our final row of the axolotl is three so we'll put those three beads on just like so and then we'll pass through both just like that and pull it tight now you can knot the end of your axolotl off if you want to knot the end if that's how you're doing it if that's your cord for me because i have my melty cord i'm going to snip the end and melt the end And then I use my lighter to just kind of press it into the bead and that fuses it into it so it doesn't come undone. And then repeat on the other side. Also make sure you do this if you're melting cord like I am. Do it in a well ventilated area. But there we go. He's all done. You can have your nice little lid, your boy. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that has answered the questions on how do you make one of these and specifically the head finned area. So I hope you were able to figure out what you wanted to do and I hope you enjoyed the video. Now I said I would do this part way through the video if you want to see how many of these axolotls I have made. So there's this one that I just made, obviously. I also have... This one, which I made last night, this was the original tutorial axolotl, but I didn't like the video and I think the black was too hard to see. So I've made those two. However, oops, they are tangled in threads. Hold on. Now, if you want to see how many axolotls, and this is not all the ones I've ever made because I have sold some in the past. Here are all my axolotls. I hadn't realized how many of these things I have made, but you can see what I mean about you. So here's one with the blue cord and transparent beads and the cord will change the color of the inside beads. And you can see this is another one with white cord and transparent beads. And you see why I like using the white cord for that. But you can also see just from my pile of axolotls, you can really do whatever kind of color combinations you want. I have crystal ones here, I have matte colored ones with jelly eyes, I have ones that are... This one is one made with mismatched sized beads and you can see the tail has issues and it kind of bubbles a little bit. And that's because these black beads are too small compared to all the other beads on it. Um, here's the first ever one I made, which was this blue one. Here's the one that started all of this mess. Um, but you can also kind of stripe the color so you can get like a nice Easter egg kind of color. Um, I have one here that's striped with jelly crystal ones. Here's a neon striped one. I have a black and white striped I have a black and jelly bead one. Um, we have my Kill Bill one. Oh, there's a baby axolotl too. Um, I have a trans pride flag one and you can see I've changed the colors throughout it to make that pop up. I have a, um, there's a Valentine's Day one. I have a non-binary flag one as well. Um, and you can see that you can just change the colors to match what you want to do. I have a Halloween spooky candy corn one. I think that one's on my channel somewhere, somewhere. Like you, you can do a lot of different color options. Like nothing is stopping you from doing different color options with these beaded with these beaded um axolotls i wanted to say lizard they're not lizards they're salamanders but you can see you can do pretty much any kind of color combination these are just ones that i have made personally and these are color schemes that i felt like doing i have made other ones like I've made a bluish one for someone else. I've made, I believe I've made an ace pride one for someone. I've made other non-binary flag ones. I've done a bisexual one before. So you can do pretty much any color scheme you want with them. Um, go ham. Clearly you see I have. Um, but yeah, that's how you make a beaded axolotl. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was able to help those who keep asking about it. And I, if you make one, show me, show me your axolotls. I want to see them. 
Whenever I make a video that helps someone make something, I always want to see it. Show me. If you've made something based on any of my videos, show me. I want to see it. I love seeing this kind of thing. It makes me so excited. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful time of day wherever you are and whatever time you're watching this right now. And I will see you in the next video. Bye! A big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Submissive Derg, Korg Ian, and Pierre Vermel. Thank you guys so much for your support. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!